What's going on YouTube? Price Builds It All, your favorite AMPIA and Part 147 instructor back, continuing the JPI EDM install on the Cessna 172. And today I'm gonna take all this wiring that looks like this and turn it into this. Stick around. So I kind of already have this side um, situated. I'll go ahead and put a, a time lapse on and show you me doing that while I talk about uh, what's going on. Um, but basically I'm gonna be taking all of the wiring and you can see it on this side still nice and loose and getting it all zip tied together where it's supposed to be all wrapped up, all secured so that I don't have these loose wires hanging all over the place anymore. Once all that is done, I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and interface the GPS for the JPI. A lot of acronyms on the EDM 900 here. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can get this uh, interface or at least identify the pins so that I can get the pins for this and get those terminated. This is the last piece of wiring that needs to be done. I did already calibrate the fuel cinders and all that good stuff um, in the last video, so I don't have to do that. Once this is connected, I'd like to try to get this all put back together minus the uh, instrument overlay, which is up at the school. All of this, it's really boring. I'll just show you the finished product. All right, so we have it completed. You can see it's all nice and pretty. I've also got this side over here done. I went ahead and zip tied these rubber lines and clamped them there. Now, this, this is not permanent. Do not come for me in the comments. I had somebody screaming at me last time about not putting zip ties on a motor mount. I know, I'm aware. This is just to hold the lines in place so that I can fit everything. I don't know what ADO clamps I need other than the ones for the lines. I have those, but I don't have the ones for the, for the mount yet. I will fix this. No, I'm not gonna film it because changing ADO clamps for zip ties is really boring. So the next thing I'm gonna do is zip tie the oil filter adapter. I'll go ahead and get oil in it before I forget and then I will move on to uh, the inside. I still got this transducer sitting here. I'm probably gonna go ahead and mark this line and take it off because I do have the new fittings for the line. I just don't have the fittings for the transducer. So I'll be waiting on that to finish up the engine, but I, it is what it is, I guess. I'm not really sure where I left off. So I'm just going to show you, I've got the plastic panels back in. I've got all those harnesses zip tied. That reminds me, I need to put this back in here, which is kind of funny to me because this thing is now gonna have three outside air temperature probes if you include the one on the JPI. But I got those done. I went ahead and changed this push to talk switch. That's pretty easy. You just pull it out, solder the new leads on, and you are done. Uh, over here, we went ahead and we serviced it with oil. So now that it's serviced with oil, I got this disc or I got this safety wired, made sure all of that was torqued and finished. I've got the battery tender on it. Oil is in it. Um, so some point during the week, it's I meant to, forgot to mention, it's sun is just beating into the hangar and I'm absolutely whooped and it's about five o'clock. Um, so I'm gonna go home. I did get all the scat tubing back on. Um, like I said, I need to order clamps for the zip ties, but I can change those later pretty easy. So that's all done, tight, torqued, finished. Um, I'll have to get the fittings for the transducer. I'll have to get the gaskets for the size fuel cinders and for y'all, that will be in just a few seconds. For me, it's gonna be a few days. So, that's gonna do it all for, well actually no, it's not gonna do it all for this video. I'll see y'all back here, I guess tomorrow night, or the night after, or the night ever, after, whenever I get the parts. And this will be the final video, the bitter end. Some of you will be heartbroken, most of you will not care. Stick around. So, 
The last real big thing that I need to wire with this is the GPS pigtail. But in order to wire the GPS pigtail, this, by the way, you probably can't see it, um, but this is for fuel pressure, which it doesn't have. So I'm just gonna depin this from the plug and pull this out of the plug and get rid of this harness altogether. But I do need to hook this up. So how I'm going to start by going about that process is by taking a 330 seconds Allen key and sticking that down inside the radio, getting a hold of the set screw and loosening it. And then once you get it loose, you just slide the radio assembly out. I like to support it in my hand. And I'll set this in the back seat. That was bubble wrap, by the way. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about. The GPS is going to tie into this plug right here. This is the P0 or P1001 plug. And I'm, I'm pulling up the diagram to get the exact pin location. I don't have the pins yet. I need to get those from a buddy of mine who's an avionics tech. So I'll get those. But in the meantime, I want to get this sort of routed and whatever I need to do to get this loose so that I can get that out. So that's what we're doing. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get these screws out of this rack so that I can slide the rack forward and just make a little bit more room for myself behind there. It's very, very snug behind the radios in this particular airplane. So isn't working there we go had to push on it a little bit so now that should allow me to very gently slide this forward just a little bit so I don't need a lot I just need enough space to get the uh, oh it's hung up on the GP or on the transponder of course it is there we go there we go You know what? I'm gonna take the transponder out too. Things definitely got out of hand, um, but I went ahead and pulled the rack. All the hardware is right here, but I went ahead and pulled both of them just so that I could get more room. The P001, I already showed it to you on the back side. This is gonna be kind of tough. Sorry for the shakiness. It's this plug right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one out so that it's ready to receive GPS data. Um, by ready to remain, receive J GPS, I mean, I just gotta terminate this and pin it so I'll probably also um, probably also trim this down to how long it's supposed to be I won't strip it yet because the insulation keeps it protected um, but I'll, I'll trim this down to about how long it's supposed to be and then that'll be ready to go for tomorrow I've got the crimper and the, and the pins coming tomorrow um, as well as quite a fair amount of other stuff so this is a like I said, I know this is really exciting. So now that I have all that sort of finished, I went ahead and zip tied all those wires and got all the harnesses um, cleaned up. But this fuel line has to have a transducer in the middle, middle of it. So I have two sets of new fittings. I actually have new fittings for here because these were wrong, but that's besides the point. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I'm gonna get the new fittings put onto this fuel line. It is officially another day and quite possibly the last day of working on this Cessna 172 JPI install which brings me to a very interesting somewhat profound and deep thought i don't know that i would actually consider it all that but the truth is often after big projects like this is a tremendous feeling of accomplishment but also a tremendous feeling of emptiness because when it comes to this kind of thing it's not like a car or a motorcycle that you can take to a show and get some recognition for. There's no grandiose trophy, there's no ceremony, there's no certificate, there's no finish line, if you will. You sign your name, you put your certificate number down, and then it's just over. It's just done, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So with that thought out of the way, there's not a whole lot left to do. I will show you, I was in a really just abysmal, appalling, mood yesterday because of an instance of uh, some road rage and then a lady trying to run me off the road because she's blind and when I say road rage I mean somebody road raged against me I'm not a road rager um, but since the last time I spoke with you guys I kind of just put my head uh, down got to work I got the radios installed I've got this in I've got the panel finished um, so that's you know the panel's done that's going to go on there like that I got to make the placards for it or order the placards for it but that's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna get everything back together and we will be finished. There's not a lot left to do. 
Um, it's all put together firewall forward. So basically it's just this. I gotta put the glove box back in it. I gotta get this panel in there um, and then finish putting the interior in. And, and truthfully I say unto you, it's, it's done, it's finished. First thing first, I'm gonna get this panel on. There you go. Um, now I gotta put a whole bunch of uh, zip ties and everything back behind here, make sure everything's nice, snug, and up out of the way. And then obviously this is, this part is, is done. So I'll do that now. All right, there you go. It's all put back together except for the seats. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. I've got uh, avionics tech, a good buddy of mine coming to troubleshoot the autopilot because it hasn't been working right since we put it back together. Um, but I can't show his face on camera because he's wanted by six federal governments. And that's obviously a lie. I just haven't asked him if he's okay with being on camera or not. But uh, this has been really, really fun stuff. I'll let you know how the uh, autopilot troubleshooting goes. And then I'll probably film an outro of us flying it. Because we're probably going to have to flight test it for the autopilot anyways. So I will see y'all when I'm doing that. And just like that, this project has come to an end yet again. Now, the whole aircraft um, in totality is actually coming to an end because the only thing really left to do at this point is to touch up the paint, paint the wingtips, and maybe put some vinyl stickers on it, and then just let it fly, rent, and make decent money for itself so that eventually it can become a T-41, but there's several thousand hours to go between there. So now I'm going to go spend some time working on some motorcycles and some projects that I have at the house. Make sure you stick around for those. Um, if you want to see more of this project, I am planning to do like a, a building a Cessna 172 in 15 minutes or 10 minutes video where I'll sort of time lapse everything and condense it down. Uh, but that's going to take me a while to do. So as always, don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Go build something and be easy.